Hello and welcome to Random Fandom Chats. I'm Dee. I'm Tandra. And this is Annabeth. Here we talk about pretty much anything fantasy and sci-fi related, and today we're actually going to be talking about the show Lex from the 90s. Now, this was a show that I had not really seen a whole lot of before we decided to do this episode, so I had to sit down and watch some of these. And my first impression of the show would probably be that it has a very good concept and some great ideas, but I don't particularly like the way they execute it sometimes. It was made in the 90s where sci-fi was kind of taking a bit of a weird turn in some ways. They were trying to push the envelope and doing more original stuff, and sometimes I think they just kind of miss the <laughs> mark sometimes. Well, yeah, I know when the when the show first came out, it was one of those I tried to watch and I just could not get into it. Um, and so I've tried to rewatch it again so that I could, you know, see what was Have going on. Have an objective on. opinion of it. Have an objective opinion. And I think you're right. I think the subject matter is interesting. Mm -hmm. The storyline's intriguing. The characters are pretty cool. But the the way they have pieced it all together and the the way so they, it's just executed and just not maybe the best of lights. It can be kind of disjointed. And part of that might have just been budget, honestly. Maybe. Although they have a lot of very famous actors in the first several episodes. Mm -hmm. They know, had quite a few guest appearances. Uh, yeah, they had uh, Roger Hauer and they had uh, Tim Curry. Tim Curry and uh, Roddy McDowell, I think, was in it. They had quite a few you know, people early on that, you know, are well known in the sci-fi industry, so mm -hmm. I'm not sure budget-wise, you know, what they were working off of. It was during the time period in which uh, networks other than the major three networks were finally starting to produce some stuff on their own, and I think they were trying to hit that edge or that envelope a little bit that you weren't, you're going to see stuff you weren't going to see on regular network mm -hmm. TV. Well, this was on Showtime as well, so they were allowed to present things in a lot more of an adult light. Right. Uh, a little bit more disgusting. There was a little bit of nudity. There was um, some other stuff. So from that point of view, I think they were trying to push that envelope just a little bit because this was still a relatively new concept of mm -hmm. having um, TV, you know, networks like Showtime and... and uh, making their own sci-fi. And I think they were also trying to make it uniquely theirs, you know, right. so people would go, oh, I love Showtime stuff because it has this, you know, quality right. to it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, from that point of view, it definitely... <laughs> mm -hmm. um, was Now, I, I'm not sure... It, the episodes are actually longer than a normal um, television right. episode. In the first season, they're basically all... Every episode's like a mini-movie. They're an hour and a half long, but then after the first season, they start going to a regular 45-minute format, I think. So, from that point of view... But they don't seem like they're incredibly long when you watch them. No, not so, necessarily. So, from that point of view, that's pretty cool, because mm -hmm. a lot of times if you get into something that's an hour and a half long, it can seem like yeah, it can seem kind of dragging. And you're kind of looking at your watch like, is this over? Yet? Yeah, but this I never really got that feeling from this, so that part was good mm -hmm. at least. Um, and like I said, some of the now we unfortunately, since we have not seen all of it, it's it's a little hard to say. Um, we have heard some things from a few other people who have seen it. Apparently, um, it gets a lot better in season two. They executed a little bit more cleanly, and it doesn't have quite as many weird jump cuts and choppiness to it. So, I'm actually thinking about watching the entire first season and then trying to go on to season two. Right, because we're only partway through the first season. Um, it does seem like a lot of the plots do revolve around um, one of the main characters constantly dying. Uh huh. Um, and and I'm trying to find a way for him permanently not to be dead. Mm -hmm. Um, but they keep thinking he's dead, and for some reason, and then one way or another, well, he's he not. is dead. He is dead. Technically. He is dead technically, and they're trying to find a way to make him not not dead. dead. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so that's an interesting concept. Uh, like I love the characters. I yeah, love they're the main, very interesting the main characters. I think they're very. I kind of have my nicknames for them. Like you've got um, you've got Edward Scissorhands, which is the, the main dead dude. dude. That dude. That hit that hair, that hair you got Marilyn like... Monroe, who's the main, the main, the main chick dude. Um, our main chick, per, Zev. And then you've got, um, I don't know who Stanley Tweedle would be. I don't know 
how you... I call him coward. <laughs> that's, that's what I call him in my head. He kind of is. He can be kind of a coward sometimes. On the other hand, he kind of jumps in there when... Yeah, when... like in the second episode, he actually was pretty brave and went to go save Kai and Zim. Yeah. So that some, was pretty cool. Yeah, like, he sometimes he can that. just be kind of weaselly. A little a bit. Times. Yeah, he's definitely out for himself as much as he can be, but he, he, he does jump in there once in a while. He's kind of one of those reluctant hero characters. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you have the robot head, which... Who's in love with Zoe. You know, <laughs> and also, I don't know, it's it's definitely a fascinating show, and if you like a lot of the shows that were produced in the 90s, mm -hmm. it's... Like I said, it definitely similar. has some great concepts, too, and great ideas to it. I think, something that I kind of noticed while watching the first few episodes is I think they might have had trouble knowing where they wanted to go with the show, what direction they wanted to take, because the first episode was a lot more like, dystopian sci-fi, a lot more gritty and serious. And then the second episode, it almost seemed like they were trying to take on a more comedic light, something maybe a little bit similar to Red Dwarf, maybe just a little bit more gritty. And then in the third episode, they seemed to go back to the dystopian future well, kind of terribleness. Well, what I was having a little trouble with is they have the overall concept of the storyline that they, they lay out mm -hmm. in the first episode, and it's this epic story kind of thing. It is. You know, this epic, you know. But, yeah, but then it almost seems like in later episodes, like, they go back to it, but then like, oh, it's over now. And it's like, wait, that don't make sense. Yeah, it's it, almost yeah. like they set up this epic storyline, but they wanted to tell these other short stories first before they really got back to that. I don't know. I'm not guy. exactly sure. And, and of course, that's part of the problem with us not having finished it yet. Mm -hmm. We won't know, you know, where they went with it. But, um, but that was one thing I kind of noticed. It's like they had this long epic story, but then it seemed like, oh wait, we're done with that now, mm -hmm. or, or you know. But then they sort of go back to it, and then they sort of act like it's done. Well, because they they're talking about in the intro to every episode after the first one, they talk about how the main shadow guy, the villain, is coming after them to get his ship back, but. But then he, he can't follow them. Yeah, he can't follow them to the dark zone or the forgotten zone or whatever right. you call it. Of course, they go back. True. You know, so then he didn't have to follow them because they're back where we where can. Going back into the lines then, so it, Yeah, speak. so I don't know. I mean, it's, it's like I said, but it is an interesting concept and it, it does have some interesting characters. And I believe some of the, the main uh, people in it have been in some other stuff that we would recognize. I can't think right off the top of my head. I'm not well, sure. I looked at the actor who plays Kai, and I was looking at his filmography, and I couldn't really see anything that I had seen him in, but he looks oddly familiar to me. Yeah, a little bit. So, well, and his name sounds familiar to me, too, so maybe we'll have some fans write to us and let us know. Yeah, we'd love to know in. what you've seen these other actors in. Yeah, maybe refresh our mean? memories. Um, maybe tell us a little bit more about the mm -hmm. storyline since it's one of the things that we're not as familiar with as, as some of the other topics. That we I definitely about. do think I want to go on to season two because I've heard that season two, they they really do take more of a comedic light on it. Like I, I think somebody told me they have a musical episode. <laughs> Kind There's a lot of things in the, in the 90s did that. Buffy's once more yeah, with feeling and yeah. whatnot. So I would like to be able to get to season two where, where, where it gets a little bit more cleanly cut and whatnot. So. Okay, well, um, that's pretty much all we have to say about it. Other than it's really hard to follow, so stick with it. Yeah, if you're watching um, it, definitely make sure you can pay attention. Because especially in the first episode, you really have to take a lot of things with your own intuitiveness. And be right, able to right. kind of piece things together on your own. You have to go, oh, I guess this is what's happening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, so let's, Annabeth, you ready to pick out what we're going to do next time? We've had a request for X-Men stuff. You think you can pick out X-Men? <laughs> I don't know. Let's grab a few here. What do we got? It's Phantom Out, so you can pick them easier. Alright, which one do you want? Orange one? I don't know. Start to go for the green, then went for the orange. She likes orange. Okay, what do we got? Warehouse 13. Ooh. All right. That's a favorite of ours, so mm -hmm. that would be fun. All right. If you guys like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. If you like what we do, subscribe. Feel free to leave any comments below. Tell us what you think of the show. Tell us if you think the second season is better than the first, or if you are faithful to the first season, or whatever you like. Thanks.